Just yeah. recently, there was a hostage situation at a synagogue in Texas where a single man came in, said he had a bomb, had a gun, and then took people hostages. Now, first off, foremost, got to make sure that we say a huge shout out to the SWAT team there and local law enforcement because they were able to take care of this situation without a single innocent civilian losing their lives. So again, we have nothing but an opportunity and a right and an obligation to say thank you to police officers, men and women who risk their lives every single day doing things like this that save countless lives and they deserve our appreciation. So so we need to say that, but also too, the reason we bring up this story and the reason we're talking about gun control today, because of course, Biden will never miss an opportunity to try to turn something into a political agenda. And here we have him doing that with this situation, speaking about guns. Except that there's, too, there's so many guns that have been sold of late, it's just ridiculous. And, uh, and it's because of the failure of us to focus as hard as we should and as consistent as we should on gun purchases, gun sales, ghost guns, a whole range of things that I'm trying to do. So once again, we have the left trying to blame inanimate objects for things that are taking place, for crimes that are happening. And we have people like Jon Stewart who think that when we see these things happening, this is obviously, this is because inanimate objects, guns are allowed in America. So here's Jon Stewart talking about that. We've lost the war on guns. Personally, I knew it was over after Sandy Hook. We had a chance to pick guns or kindergartners, and we went with guns. There are 393 million guns in America, and I don't want to be judgy, but I think it's gotten absurd. Hunting season has arrived. Diamond hunting season, that is. If you have your sights set on this, you can get this free from Leanne's Fine Jewelry. Every kill begins with K. <laughs> so, oh. Mm -hmm. I really missed that. Now, as much as I hate to admit it, John Stewart is funny, and he has had better moments like this one. How did this... So, wait a minute. You work at the Wuhan Respiratory Coronavirus Lab. How did this happen? And they're like, mm, a pangolin kissed a turtle. <laughs> And you're like, no, I, you, you the wait, name wait, of your lap. If you look at the name, look at the name. Can I, let me see your business card. Show me your business card. Oh, I work at the coronavirus lab in Wuhan. Oh, cause there's a coronavirus loose in Wuhan. But even when pandering to the woke ideology of the left and mirroring some of their talking points around gun control, it does bring up some interesting subjects like gun control. It, do we really have a gun control problem in the United States? So let me give you just a couple of little basic facts about gun control so that we don't have to fall for the lie that when Sandy Hook happened, we could have gotten rid of all guns and we made a choice between guns and kids and we chose guns here in America. So he is right about something that there are that many guns in the United States. In fact, according to ProCon, Org, the United States has 120.5 guns per 100 people, or about 393,347,000 guns, which is the highest total and per capita number in the world. 22% of Americans own one or more guns, 35% men, 12% are women. All right, so let's just kind of put these numbers to the test here. So America is the number one gun owning country in the world, according to Procon.org. So it would stand to reason, therefore, that the number one gun owning country in the world would have the worst homicide rate in the world, right? They have the most guns and we've chosen guns uh, when we could have chosen lives and we chose guns instead and our petty little rights. So let's see, where do we rank up in terms of homicide in the world? The countries with the highest rates of violent gun death per 100,000 residents in 2019, number one, you might have guessed, since America is the number one highest gun-owning country in the world. Of course, number one is El Salvador. Well, then we'll go to the second one, and maybe we'll find a little bit more luck there. Well, the second one is Venezuela. But you guessed it, the third one, of course, 
as you might assume, since we are the number one country with the most amount of guns in the world, is of course Guatemala. Fourth, Colombia. Five, Brazil. Six, Bahamas. Seven, Honduras. Eight, U.S. Virgin Islands. Nine, Puerto Rico. And ten, Mexico. So I could go on and on and on, but hopefully you get the point at this, at this junction. Is that, yeah, we do have the highest amount of guns, but we don't really suffer from the highest amount of homicides or death by guns like some of these other countries in the rest of the world. Now, wherever we are on the list, it's nothing to brag about because it would be nice if it was zero. But to think that that's going to happen just simply because we remove guns on the street is to do what people on the left have done for far too long, is to blame an inanimate object for a problem that is caused by an animate person. So we don't blame guns for gun violence. We blame people for violence. And that brings us to our next headline because we'll drill down a little bit further to what this really has to do with parents. So I'm sure you're familiar at this point in time with a story that happened last year. Tonight, the parents of accused school shooter Ethan Crumbly are about to turn themselves in, according to their attorney, after being charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter in connection with Tuesday's deadly attack at a Michigan high school. At one point, the sheriff saying the parents were on the run. So we have our fugitive apprehension team. We in consulting uh, with the FBI and also the U.S. Marshals fugitive team. Earlier in a stunning press conference, prosecutors laying out a portrait of Jennifer and James Crumbly's actions leading up to the attack allegedly carried out by their 15-year-old son. The facts of this case are so egregious. They say the suspect was there at the store when his dad bought the semi-automatic handgun. His mother saying on social media it was her son's, quote, Christmas present. Earlier that week, prosecutors say a teacher had been alarmed, catching the suspect doing an online search for bullets on his phone. But his parents allegedly ignoring calls from the school. His mother, Jennifer Crumbly, texting her son, quote, LOL, I'm not mad at you. You have to learn how not to get caught. And then the day of the attack, a teacher discovering the suspect's disturbing drawings. A drawing of a semi-automatic handgun pointing at the words, quote, the thoughts won't stop, help me, end quote. Between the drawing of the gun and the bullet is a drawing of a person who appears to have been shot twice and bleeding. Below that figure is a drawing of a laughing emoji. Both parents were called to the school and shown the drawings, but prosecutors say they never searched their son's backpack or told the school their son had access to a gun. Now, before we go any further, I want to take a moment to just to say there were four who were killed and seven who were injured in this deadly shooting that took place by this 15-year-old at a Michigan high school. Now, as you can tell from the story already, there's a lot more to this story than just the fact that this kid had a gun. The prosecutor, uh, the DA in, in Michigan, is going after the parents, and they are being charged with four counts of manslaughter. I want to drill down just a little bit further to show you exactly why, so that we can get the big picture here beyond the talking points about gun control. And this is from NPR, quote, several warnings were raised about the 15-year-old the day before the morning of the shooting, including by a teacher who discovered disturbing drawings and messages on a math worksheet. On the morning of November 30th, a school guidance counselor called James and Jennifer Crumley, the parents, into a meeting where they were told to seek counseling for their son within 48 hours or else the school would call Child Protective Services, according to authorities. At the meeting, the Crumleys refused a request to take their son home from school and did not inform school authorities that they had already recently purchased a gun for him, according to the court. About two hours later, Ethan Crumley began his shooting spree, prosecutors say. Now, it doesn't stop there because it, there's more to this story. As far back as March of 2021, Ethan Crumley would text his mother, Jennifer, on more than one occasion, and always when he was home alone, that he thought there was a demon, a ghost, or someone else inside of the home. Now, you tell me, and it doesn't take a college degree to get this one, so it's a fair question. Would you buy this child a gun? The obvious answer is no. There's no reason this boy should have had a gun, and so... I personally think what the DA is doing here in Michigan is absolutely called for because what this story shows us more than anything, and if you'll go back and look at any of these school shootings, is that what we have is derelict parents who are not doing their job, and this is why school shootings even exist. There are tons of guns in Tennessee. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. 
and not a whole lot of school shootings because there is responsible gun ownership taught to kids from a pretty early adolescent age here in Tennessee. Now, I'm not even going to get into like what age is the right age for any of that stuff. I'm just going to merely tell you. You can always trace wherever a kid has a gun back to bad parents. And this is maybe what we need a national conversation about if we're really concerned with school shootings, if we're really concerned with things like Sandy Hook, then it behooves us to get to the point where we ask, what are we going to do about bad parenting in the United States? What are we going to do about the parenting crisis in America? You can catch brand new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman every Monday and weekly bonus episodes to keep you thinking throughout the week. But you have to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new episodes drop. If you enjoy this content, make sure to like this video and share it with friends.